Greetings and welcome to the RC Wall Vacuum Channel. So today's video is just a quick uh, how-to. Uh, I was in the process of rebuilding these Losey shocks, which I don't cover in this video. I figure there's probably 500,000 other videos on that. No point in being redundant. Uh, what I was doing though is I was upgrading to these fast lane. This this here kit uh, I got it from DDM. It's uh, their part number was SM three seven nine. And fast lane, it's a 34510. It's a shock end uh, kit with a with spring purchase on there. Uh, a couple things to note: you won't. I don't believe you're going to be able to use these uh, these boots to come with a stock Losey rebuild kit. So whether it's good or bad, I don't know. Uh, they seem like they rip all the time anyhow. But they are somewhat effective for keeping it dirty. So keep that in note: you won't be able to use those. And the other thing to note is they, uh, they have these uh, rod end kits in aluminum and they have uh, these uh, swivel ball devices in there and uh, I believe they have Teflon seals on there. I think something that actually will hold this. The thing to note is these Teflon seals, get this camera to focus over here, these uh, Teflon seals have a taper on, or on them, and when they show up, they, I don't know if they fell in randomly or were installed into the uh, rod in itself, but they're, they were in backwards, and you have to have these in there, uh, them tapers correctly matched, otherwise you won't get the, uh, the outer plate, which is this little aluminum disc. To bolt down on their flush, so just make sure when you uh, when you're setting them up that you, you you got these two Teflon seals so that when they're on that ball, they they basically touch each other, and if you have something like that, you're good to go. And then lock tight the shit out of everything. I had one of these stock uh, Losey perches or shock rod ends, I should say, pop off. That's why I'm switching these aluminum ones. And uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't like the idea that I can't put these on these uh, these rubber boots. I do run the outer wears on the uh, shocks themselves, but they don't keep everything out either. But either way, you really need to get in there and change your shock oil frequently. Anyhow, dirt gets in there no matter what. <clears throat> so other than that, they're pretty straightforward. I didn't see any instructions on anywhere on fast lane site, or it didn't come with instructions. So I just kind of make up my own. The other thing is too is uh, and hopefully they're right. Uh, they, they did include these O-rings besides the, uh, those Teflon seals. So I just kind of I didn't really say where to go, so I just put the O-ring down inside this cup here and uh, use that as kind of a buffer between the uh, these two parts here. I don't know, it seemed like that worked, so uh, <clears throat> between that and hopefully a lot of Loctite, they'll stay in place. And uh, they look pretty cool once they're all installed, although you won't see it because it'll be covered up by the, the outer wares. But, uh, so other than, other than the note of uh, make sure you do that, otherwise you're going to mess the seals up. Make sure they're uh, matched correctly, and then you should be good to go. So let's look what they look like once they uh, get installed. Just make sure when you're uh, dealing with these shocks that you remember that the uh, the rear left and the right front are left-handed screws. They're either stainless or chrome-plated. That's how you can tell the difference between them. And another thing to note too when you rebuild your shocks is I'm a firm believer in once you get the oil in there, uh, cycle the piston a few times and then let them sit for at least, at least 10 to 15 minutes for the air to get all the way out before you, before you close them up. You know, it seems like it's even though you can cycle that piston back and forth, it just, it, it just takes time for some reason. Thanks for watching.